really blessed to be joined by one of my oldest friends. We've been friends since we were five years old, and he's got one hell of a story to tell. We're going to sit back and let him tell it. Yeah, so I mean, my childhood was amazing, honestly. Anything a kid could ask for. Um, super privileged. Grew up in a nice town. Um, always had awesome friends, good family. And then I would say around like late uh, fifth, sixth grade, I started to feel like like looking back, I know now it's anxiety, but at the time I was like, why do I feel so sick to my stomach? Kids, adults, doesn't really matter what age you are, doesn't matter how good you, your life is or how amazing it might seem, you could still feel all those the same way. And I think when it's seemingly that you have a great life, it's really hard for people to grasp like the understanding of why you, or how you could feel that way, right? So I think that made it it made it super difficult for me to even believe that I felt that way. Cause I was like, do I actually feel this way? Like, it's just a bad day. And I'm like, that's a lot of bad days. Like, it's more than just a bad day, you know? Um, it was a lot more di more challenging to even tell someone. Cause I felt like if I was gonna tell, especially an adult, like, hey, I, I'm feeling a bit suicidal, feeling depressed, whatever. They're gonna be like, why? And I'm gonna have no explanation. I wasn't like, there was nothing terrible going on in my life at that time. Um, from the outside to make me really feel that way, but obviously it was just my brain chemistry was just all mixed up. My serotonin levels were just super low. So I remember the summer going into freshman year high school, so that right after eighth grade, pretty much that entire summer I was planning to kill myself before the first day of Shamrad. I had so much anxiety and fear of starting something new because, like, at this point I was comfortable with tonight, I knew everybody. Like, my anxiety was there, but it, it was controlled because I was, you know like an environment of comfort. So a new shamana, like being a new kid, um, you know, like a big, a small fish in a big pond type thing, and I was just like, I was terrified. And I eventually just broke down, like to my mom, I was like, I, I don't know what the fuck's going on, like I'm so sad, and like everything is great, so please help. Um, so that was like my first cry for help, because I, I was sick of feeling sick. I was kind of just going through the motions and doing like, minimum of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, barely passing, barely, you know, kind of just scraping by. Um, and at, at Shamana, like you said, it's such a, like, a prestigious school. Um, I felt like it was super hard to open up to anyone at the school, and, like, I didn't want to open up really to my parents at the time, because I was a kid, and it's, like, just, everything's just uncomfortable mm -hmm. at that age. Um, so I just felt very, I was very alone in my head, um, which is, the worst place to be. That, that was when I was like, all right, this is getting like really scary. Cause I wasn't on medication. I wasn't going to therapy at that point. And I was just like going downhill fast. So my idea, my fantastic idea was let's start like smoking weed and drinking. And like, when I do those things, I feel awesome. So let's just keep doing that all the time. Um, bad idea, uh, just made me way more depressed, obviously. Um, and then I was, Kind of purposely also not intentionally failing out of Chaminade so I could go to public school. That's when the transition happened going to Southside. I was like, this is going to be, my life's going to change, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to be so happy. I can't wait. And that, uh, like, level of anticipation or excitement to go to that school was ultimately the pitfall of my life that, like, for the next few years. Me at the time, in combination with the transition period, was a cocktail for disaster. And my whole thinking and my parents thinking was like, he'll, he'll transfer in, like he won't play soccer, it'll just be like a nice, relaxing, like easy transition. Um, <clears throat> but the day that I was like going to tour the school with my parents, like the soccer coach at the time, stops his teaching his math class, stops the te uh, teaching to come talk to me. And like pretty much is like, you're gonna be on the like varsity. And I was like, great, this, this, is, a, this is a fucking disaster. <laughs> And that was when the time we like we wanted to be cool, so we were partying, or like smoking weed and drinking, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, drinking right. natty lights. <laughs> yeah. At the bridge. Yeah, exactly. All six of us. Yeah. But now that I'm at public school and not Chaminade, I can smoke during the week. Like I can, you have to leave school for 40, 60 minutes, whatever, whatever it is for your free period. I started to like play a lot, and that really pissed people off. Like. <clears throat> parents of some of the seniors that had like my kid's been here for four years whatever that made me feel like such shit because I felt like 
these kids don't even really know me and they're not gonna like me already because I'm like taking a chunk of their playing time whatever it is right so I kind of just like I had a back injury right so I I, I uh, separated myself from that whole drama because I was like you know what it's not fucking worth it I'll play next year yeah. right around like Thanksgiving that sophomore year someone uh, like had Oxycontin at a party or like we were just smoking and someone's like well let's try this with it or whatever so I did that and I was like wow this is fucking amazing like I've never felt so little pain before like I felt amazing um, for 20 minutes just eating those like they were Tic Tacs in class um, and that went on for probably not that long but like three months or so I was, that's kind of my life I was just Smoke weed after school, smoke weed during school, take a few pills during school. And that was just like, just a zombie through through that uh, period. But the weekend before Christmas, it was like, I don't know, December 15, 16, something like that. Um, was the first time that I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I took, I don't know, 15, 20 Oxycontins, which if they were, if they hadn't been like five years expired, there was no shot. You like wake up from that. Mm -hmm. um, so luckily, thank God, um, they were expired. So they didn't, if anyone doesn't know when they're expired, like they're not as potent. So they were pretty much just made me incredibly sick. I've never been so sick in my life. I threw up for about three days. Um, just straight like all the pills, obviously. Um, but that was my first like serious attempt to end my life. My parents just thought I was like super sick, mm -hmm. like I got some bad stomach bug or something, but they didn't know to what extent because like I was, I got good at putting on a face that I was like, yeah, I'm happy. But then I told my sister because I, I just at that point I just needed to tell somebody like, look, I'm struggling here. Like so she tells my parents and then they send me to like a to just like a psych ward and uh. Zucker Hillside Hospital or whatever. They had like a adolescent. It's hard for being that age because most places won't take kids. Mm -hmm. So they had, a, if you were under 18, some like 12 to 18. So I went there. That was like my first time going going away. I argue that my parents would say it was the biggest mistake they made. Because at the time, now it's like a nice place. Like it's beautiful. But when I went, it was like the shit you'd see in a movie. Like it was run the fuck down. Um, it was just a scary place for essentially a child. Like I'm 15. So like... I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm in this place with people that scare the shit out of me. Um, so, like, borderline traumatized from that. Yeah. So, Once I get out, it's like, I don't know, January, January, February. I still have no sports or anything. And it's not like my life changed. I went right back to school and lived my life. And that was when I started, like, I wanted to forget that I was there. So I was smoking, drinking, taking pills, like, all the time uh, for the rest of sophomore year, basically. Fall of junior year, I was doing, what I was doing in the summer continued, I was just doing a bunch of drugs, drinking a lot, whatever, like, thought I was hot shit, because I was like, look at me, I got a hot girlfriend, I'm doing drugs, like, I'm the fucking man, right? 16 year old asshole. Um, but I have like, a few weeks, like a month or so into, this, into the soccer season of my junior year, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a bunch of Xanax in one of my off periods. Um, I remember a friend seeing me before I walked into the building was like, Stephen, like you shouldn't really not go in like that. You look awful. And I was like, no, I'll be fine. <laughs> and then like the dean or the principal, whatever, whatever she was at the school, was in the back of their class and just like taps me on the shoulder after that period is over. And is like, come with me. And like, I'm, I can't even walk. I'm walking into walls. I am like delirious of what's going on. But that ends up just suspending me from, from school. So I immediately kicked off the soccer team, obviously. So it's me and like just a bunch of kids that are like, have all been suspended. Or like if you get expelled, you go to, it's called like, I think it's called the greenhouse or something. It's, it was literally underneath like a soccer, sta uh, soccer station, <laughs> like soccer store. <laughs> Junior year, spring, uh, lacrosse season was happening. I was like, that was my big year. I had already committed to Fairfield for lacrosse by then. Right. I was like, wow, I can smoke and take pills and still play amazing. Like, this is so easy. Mm -hmm. Eventually it caught out to me, right? So I was just like a fucking mess. And all my coaches knew it. They were like, what? They could like look into my eyes and I was just dead. Um, I've been cutting myself a lot and just like, just self-harm behaviors in general. Um, 
on top of attempted suicides. So that was when people started to see like what the fuck is going on with this kid. Cause I was hiding, like I was hiding the doing, taking pills, but like, but like once I was cutting myself, it was like my coaches were like, what the fuck? Like it's, it's hard to see a 16 year old kid, 17 year old kid that you think of as like, whatever, a popular athletic kid. And he's got slashes all up his wrist and you're like, okay, something is super fucked up here. Um, the way my depression was manifesting, I felt just, I felt nothing. Like it got to the point where I wasn't even so sad anymore. I literally didn't feel anything like joy, excitement, like not, I felt zero emotions. So I started cutting to see if like, I know if I feel pain, like I'm still, I feel something, right? Um, and my friends, I like we're great, honestly. I remember a couple of times I was talking to like my girlfriend at the time saying scary shit like you don't want you don't want to hear as any any person wants to hear that stuff. Um they came like picked me up and like got me food and shit. Like I hadn't eaten for days, like I was just cutting myself. It was just a it was just bad. This is when I first saw people really like gave a fuck about me. So halfway through lacrosse season, um I my parents sent me to like a a twenty eight day program in Connecticut, a place called Silver Hill. It's a fucking incredible facility. It's like where like celebrities go. So again, super privileged where I got to go to like the best of the best places to get help. And I still was like, fuck you. I don't like, I don't belong here. Like I don't need this help. Right. Um, so I was there for about five weeks, I think. Ultimately, I, like, I got out of there and I was good for, I don't know, a couple months or so until like, I fell back into the same cycle. That was the hardest point for me because that one, it was no longer like my big secret where it was like, all right, now everyone knows that this kid that seems like, yes, everything is really not good. And then you hear all these rumors, like all this bullshit, like, oh, he, there's nothing wrong with him. Like he just wants attention. I'm like, I get plenty of attention. I want the opposite. I want to blend in like the girl over there that no one notices, you know? Like I just want to be invisible. Absolutely, can't do, can't do half this life stuff alone. No, I really can't. Not. Especially when you're struggling, you can't do it alone. Let's uh, I'm just gonna take a cut of everything and then do like a part two because this is like really fucking powerful.